previously on the season. We don't have a great record of success. Out of all the GPS schools, obviously, we haven't, uh, we haven't won it since 1954, and that, that monkey's been on our back. No team's ever won an outright premiership at BBC. They don't want it lingering in the background. Nobody outside of our group believes that you guys can do it. Let's prove everyone wrong. Tell Jack if he can. In 2019, cameras followed Brisbane Boys College First 15 as they navigated their way through the arduous GPS rugby competition in the hunt for their first ever standalone premiership. Andrew, do you miss Mum's cooking yet? I miss Mum's cooking two days before I left. Jersey 12, Lucas Ripley. You should be running onto it at full bore. Getting named that first week, calling my mum and dad that night, like they started crying for me. We wanted to open ourselves up to you guys and bring you into our program. There's one or two of you starting to drop your heads because you don't like what you're going through. Audiences witnessed on and off field life with the players, coaches and school community as the team galvanised support from the students and old boys in a breakthrough season for the rugby program. Do I have to work this out? <laughs> That's like a chance for us to show the boys how loud we can be when we're all there, when we're all in. The series revealed the collective effort by the school to restore pride and instill success into a sport that had long underachieved at GPS level. Head up, mate. I don't want you to be disappointed. I'm happy with you. That's all that matters. Tomorrow, it's really important. We control our emotions throughout the day, OK? It's nice scrum. Yes! It's been lost sport on the ground. There's 30 seconds left. But the referee says no. You can't throw it out. It's a penalty. Despite the unrivaled success of the team, they ultimately fell short of the Premiership title in a true tale of sporting heartbreak. But cameras have returned to Kensington Terrace to see if the building blocks of 2019 will end a 108 year drought for the school. It was a really emotional time knowing that you're never going to do this again and I, I think it's something special. Um, gym program as normal, so just get through all of that, there's nothing different there. Let's uh, dig in today, dig in at training tomorrow, and then we'll have a good week, wrap everything up, yeah? Alright, cool. I don't know, I tweaked my hammy, oh my groin at training. Is that getting better? Yeah, it feels better today, but... Just make sure you rest that, yeah? Yeah, I got some ice on it. Kick and salvo? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to play. 
delicious. Yeah, that's that's a bit sore. Not really that sore to touch. That's a bit sore. Out of ten. Four or five. Let's go, bro. Nervous for the weekend, eh? Yeah. How about you? Nah, I'm alright. You've only got four more weeks of school, don't you? Yeah, something like that. In a year where many students are lucky enough to simply be at school, the BBC First 15 squad are making the most of their fractured season. The training and playing schedule has been compromised, but remains miraculously intact. Early on, a few of us realised that um, we've got a good group of kids, not just um, on the field, but off the field as well. All the boys got along with each other. I was really excited. We fell short in 2019. We had a new couple of new boys came to the school. We had um, good team camaraderie from straight away from the start. You reckon those new players will work? I don't know. I don't reckon. The midfield ones are a bit scary. We get like no midfield scrums anyway. I know. The 2020 season was very different, where there was a, a big cloud over it. But um, once we got the green light to go ahead, we had to be very, very intentional. It was a much shorter season. We had depth in the squad and pressure on each of the positions. You know, there was always that tremendous potential that this could be the year. Some of them were bringing back experiences from last year as well, so they were a little bit more mature in the approach that they took. We always had a chance. We had experience in the older boys and new talent coming up. We all had um, our different strengths and they were all threats across the field and the trust that we had between each other held us in both attack and defence. I certainly went into the season really expecting to win because we had a lot of returning players and we all, we all worked really hard. I think we all knew that we had it in us to win. The truncated season gets underway with two sound victories followed by two tough away fixtures. I thought we were built definitely throughout the season. We were tracking okay. We knew we weren't uh, where we should be. We were still shaky and considering that uh, we had a shortened pre-season. We weren't at our best for the first three games. I felt we were very sloppy in stages, but we defended really well in our games. It was just our attack that we were lacking, a bit of cohesion between us. Despite the improved form, all eyes turn to the round six game against TSS. Getting Howarth, Howarth, Howarth with the right footstep. Howarth, he's hard to put down this afternoon. Oh, he's fighting for every metre. The demons of 2019 remain, with the agonising Southport defeat still needing to be exercised from the hearts and minds of the BBC community. Scrum in, fed well, ball goes back. Can't do that. But the referee says no. That's it. The ball went dead. I think, again, some of the players' experiences out of last year and some of the pain and hurt that came out of that experience probably, you know, came to the fore. We had to prove to ourselves that uh, we had it in us. We weren't going to fall short like the year before. So that game was extremely important to win. That game was possibly could have been our, one of our best performances that we put on the season. Everything just clicked. Just to see the boys get on top early and then really go on with it, I think was um, marvellous to see. I've not seen a game like that before. We all had to take in the scoreboard again because nobody anticipated or expected us to put 40, 45 points on them. Once we finished that game, it was sort of the bus ride home. That was like we celebrated a bit and um, that was literally it. Everyone knew from then on, like, we can't be with that team that has a big win and goes on to lose. The undefeated run sets up a much anticipated fixture against perennial premiership favourites, Nudgy College. Next time 
on the season. Set. I think everyone was definitely nervous, but we we're all confident that if we did our jobs, that we could win. Second last game of the season, ball goes high, left foot kick. I think that really gave us a shock with how good they were in the first 20 minutes. For more information on Brisbane Boys College, go to bbc.qld.edu.au.